want to begin by thanking all of you who have monetarily supported my channel. Those of you who have joined my channel, who have been members, who are still members, who generously donate to my Cash App, to my PayPal, y'all, the money is circulating. It is a beautiful thing. And if it doesn't go to me, it goes to another beautiful, good Black woman. So thank you so much for blessing me to be a blessing. Today is, um, my subject is, I encourage Black women to avoid these kinds of men, okay? Or this type. Anyhow, um, this is one of the singers from the Goody Mob. What's that song? I'm so sick of being lonely. Every something, something, my man goes out with this ho, ho me he's. I want to know what it is to be loved, to be lo uh, uh, uh. loved. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, this guy, Darian, is like the perfect example of a man to be avoided at all costs in terms of romantic interest. Um, he landed a, a good and ambiguously monoracial Black woman. I mean, college educated, super pretty, um, beautiful teeth, lips, cheekbones, skin. I mean, stylish. She was a basketball player in college, um, still athletic and still move that body, can hoop, even though, you know, it's 14, 15 years down the road. Um, this is a guy who has done, I mean, that song was really true. You know, where he's like, any other night, you be happy, me. Like, like, why is my wife not calling me? Like, what's going on? Like, normally she be acting like a book, right? So anyhow, <laughs> I'm a goofball. Anyhow, um, I wanted to share something with you that I think is really important when it comes to why these men have to be avoided. I feel that Alexia can do so much better, but she has invested so much time and money, blood, sweat, and tears in this man. It's no wonder why she won't leave, can't leave, is not going to leave, okay? And they went on some show called Put a Ring on It, and it was, he even cheated on her on the show, okay? He even slept with one of the dates he had on the show, got some real quick, decided to, you know, walk away from her, and then tried to make it better with Alexia by saying, you know, yeah, you know, I'm going to get rid of my condo. I'm going to, um, right? Because he keeps a condo. That's where he would bring his women, Right? Not home, obviously, to the house that him and Alexia take care of and pay for. And he's also had three different babies on her. They've been together for 14 years. She's in her mid-30s. They've never had a kid because she wanted to do it right, right? She's on some, you know, no wedding, no womb, and I commend her for that. But this man has let, you know, gray hairs emerge from her scalp before allowing her in their relationship to be a mother and a wife, before offering that to her, even though she has given him so much. Without further ado, I'm going to play a little something, something, very much something right now. So, like the video. Darian Smoke Crawford is one of the most talked about cast members on the relationship reality show, Put a Ring on It. And while most of the viewers have gotten to know him over the past several weeks, his ex, Dina Marie Harper, knows him very well. During an interview with Kamishia Reviews on YouTube, Dina opens up about her past relationship with Darian. What viewers see today is no surprise to her. And she warns that he's a man who targets businesswomen that aren't familiar with his reputation. Now, this is an awful photo of Alexia, but I feel like even though it's an awful photo, you can look at this woman's nose, forehead, cheekbones, skin. I mean, you, you can just tell she's a beautiful woman. And I, I remember when he said on the show, I've been with her for 14 long years. That's a long time. Like if he wanted to marry you, he would have been like, man, the time flew by. But him being like, woo, long time, long time. And I hate to say it, but physically, he looks like, like there's a reason Tyler Perry puts a certain kind of guy in his, to play the bad guy in his um, 
movies. And I know that that can be really very colorist, but I mean, for me, it's not even that he shares the same color as this ex of mine. It's that, I mean, down to the bald head, the F boy energy, you know, he's not as yoked up, you know, because, you know, mine was a, some, you know, a somatic narcissist who stayed constantly in the gym. But I mean, the two of them look like brothers. They, they look like siblings. So sometimes um, there's a look. And likewise, when it comes to the mammy, right? Because Alexia, no disrespect to her, because oftentimes being a mammy as a Black woman can be a very innocent thing. I know that for the majority, vast majority of my life I was. And, you know, I do my damnedest to try to spoil my Black niece. I have a, I have a half um, white little sister and um, she has a child as well. And her... Uh, the father of her daughter is uh, super mixed. So when I say my, my um, when I normally refer to my niece, I'm referring to the black one because the other one is very much multiracial, very much has African ancestry, but she's, she's not going to look like qualify as like black woman. Like she is, you know, a very, very, I mean, this, this little girl is black, white, Filipino, Mexican, Native American, like she's got a whole lot going on. And she's just, you know, a hodgepodge of humanity. And we thank God for her and her just her lovely self. But normally when I refer to my niece, I refer to the black one, okay, um, with the monoracial to black parents. And I do my best to spoil her and give her just the uppity attitude so that she doesn't settle for this kind of thing. So that she forces the men who are available to her and want her to be a certain caliber of man. I want her to be disgusting repulsive to men like Darian. Even though she's pretty, I want her attitude to be she thinks she all that, man, she's uppy, man. She act like she all highfalutin and high sedity. Like, you know, as much as I, you know, my affections were given to Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, I will still make an exception if my niece like and push her towards Alpha Kappa Alpha, AKA pink and green, snooty, patootie. Like, I just want her to avoid this kind of thing at all costs. Um, I want her to be the black girl that turns into the black woman who made it, right? That we as her elders break this kind of curse where you're stuck with a man having babies on you for however many years. Because you have to be this ride or die, mammy, pick me, handmaiden, you know, just be patient with him. It'll come around. And before you know it, you're 14 years in, you don't have the same body. You don't have the same appeal to him. And there's still no insurance of a wing, a ring, a marriage license or anything like that. Anyhow. Yeah, this is Darian from the Goody Mob. I think his last hit was with Sierra. I don't know. 2020, 2011, maybe. According to Dina, she and Darian met on Twitter in 2009. They flirted for a few months, but nothing major happened between the two during that time. Around 2011, Harper shared that she decided to move to Atlanta. She made Darian aware that they were finally in the same city, hinting that they could probably hang out <laughs> sometime. He One of the things that I want to discuss that I saw on uh, this put a ring on it, show on own the oprah winfrey network he engaged in a lot of gaslighting he engaged in a lot of making alexia think she was crazy and when he dropped that hammer on her when he said man she ain't marriage material my heart fell into my i'm like who do you think you are you had two children on this woman excuse me three children on this woman with two different women who do you think you are? This woman has never cheated on you, ain't beaten on you, feeds you, supports you. I mean, come on. I mean, you're going to figure out as this video plays that this is the type of guy who, I mean, okay, he was a recording artist. He says that he'd be in the studio, but really he'd be talking to other women, text another woman from one woman's car, trying to pick up another woman in another woman's car, like looking for women who've got money so they'll spend it on him. We'll have mercy on him. We'll do the thing that we always do. The thing that I used to do. Oh, poor black man. Poor, poor victim. Poor baby. Like, no, that's the stuff that makes you resent us in reality. You want that help. 
right? You want to hit us like a lick, but in reality, you resent us later because that, that says that we're the boss. That says we're the mother and you're the child. That says we're the protector and the provider. And that makes you feel emasculated. It's not what you should do because it, it, it violates your very nature. But this is the kind of God, man. Invited her to the studio, but since there were only men there, she declined the invitation as she didn't feel comfortable being the only woman there. She declined the invitation in spite of her inviting, her being invited to be around all these celebrities, right? I'm, I'm taking this back to when he said she's not marriage material. A hole. He, she, he invited her to a studio full of dudes, full of men who are paid in the music industry, whatever. And she was just like, no, nah, I don't do that. How is that not marriage material? A woman who really wants to see you get with you. She made it known in that moment. I'm about you. It ain't about who I can meet. It's not about who I can network with. Thank you for inviting me to the studio to hang out with you. I'm good. It's too many men there. I have modesty. I have chastity about myself. I have decorum about myself. I'm not about to be the only woman in a room full of dudes, bro. No, thank you. This is a good girl. And I'm telling you, Black women like Alexia get played every day by men like Darian. And these are the kind of men who are throwaways that we mess around and keep because we were groomed to be mammies. We were groomed to put other people before ourselves. And then by the time we need them, you know, oh, you're old and you got gray hair, you're in your 30s and 40s and you ain't marriage material, whoop de whoop 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 How can you fix your chap lips? to say someone's not marriage material when when you you're the person with with three babies within the 14 years that you've been with her by two different women you're the one who doesn't wrap it up when you sleep around you're the, you're the one who sleeps uh, bro you have you have no moral authority over alexia but you talk like you do because the reality is as long as black women do not open their options to all men black men are a hot commodity because they're like, you know, it's like a one to eight ratio or something. It, it's, I mean, they have eight different women to choose from. And if you cough the wrong way, he can just leave you and go to somebody else. But when you open up your options, you become that commodity too. There's men coming into America from all over the world who are in STEM and, and cybersecurity and all kinds of stuff looking for women. China has a drought of women after killing all of God. It's hard to say after getting rid of all of those baby girls, the, these men don't, they don't have women. There are in, entire communities in China of men. You want to talk about being a hot commodity? You want to talk about your gender alone making you a, a, a who's who, a somebody among wealthy men who are literally taking over the world, literally purchasing all of Africa and the Caribbean? Huh? Huh? But you want to wait around for Darian, who's going to bring you home STDs because he can't, he can't keep it in his pants? Because it feels like he's such a former superstar, he's allowed to do that kind of thing? Huh? Who you get 14 years of your life, who you give your youth as you enter into middle age, and all you got is, is three step babies to show for it, and baby mamas who are permanently in your life and in your relationship? Huh? Why are you why are you mad at black women for this? Why why are you mad at us for telling you you ought to stay away from people like this? I'll be right back. Let me play this real quick. From him until around seven years later, when she happened to text him while she was inebriated. She sent him something via text that quickly captured his attention. The two then agreed to meet up, however, it never happened. That same day, Dina said she had a heart attack and ended up staying in the hospital for four days. She reached out to Darian, to let him know what was going on with her. That she would be off work for two weeks, and she still wanted to meet up with him. But her text messages would go unanswered. She received no response at all. A month later, Harper would get a text from Darian, inviting her to a club where he would be performing. At the end of the evening, she made it clear she wasn't looking for anything from him. She understood the rapper lifestyle, so she was okay with going on about her way. The next day, Darian called her saying he wanted to spend the entire day together, which would carry on for years thereafter. One day, 
Darian showed up at her front door. According to Dina, he looked as if he was homeless. She would eventually give him a key to her home and buy him a whole new wardrobe and a month later, get him a car using her name and credit. Allegedly, Darian gave her the impression that everyone was failing him, and he desperately needed a car to get to work and to be able to see his children. He had a job at the time, so he had the means to pay for it, but he didn't have enough credit, therefore, she stepped in to help him. She alleges that he never paid a dime of insurance while he had the car, despite the fact that she literally begged him on multiple occasions. And while he claimed, he needed the car to travel for work and to see his children, he didn't include that he would also be using it, to visit another woman. She shared one time, while they were in Dubai on a trip, she caught him texting another woman saying, he wished he were there with her. Another time, while they were in Vegas, he left his phone open, so she went through it, and found pictures of another woman doing things to him. During the summer, his children would spend time at her home. Because allegedly, one of my exes, um, the bona fide narcissist, his son spent so much time at these side women's houses that they're like auntie so-and-so. I mean, he will go to their house, drop that little boy off. I mean, I mean, and he's legally married now, right? Drop that little boy off. Call me when he goes to sleep. She puts him to sleep. He comes over or she texts him. He comes over, puts it down, picks up his son, leaves. So when they say these children are spending time at these women's houses or, or when they say that about Darian, I understand that this is a common occurrence. And it's not to say all black men, but it's, it is to say it's common enough to be like, all right, we're, we're clearly there, there's a gender disparity where you all you need is a heartbeat and a job to be called a good black man. Are there excellent black men out there? You damn skippy, I got one. But I mean, even his excellence, it's like people like to line up other people with him like, like you know, who, who who don't qualify. It's like, you're not as good as him. You don't qualify. You're not that kind of man. You got a heartbeat and a job or a heartbeat and no job. And you know, oh, I'm alive. You know, I'm a black man. I deserve respect because I'm a man. No, you deserve respect if you carry yourself in a respectful way. People who deserve respect, it's because they're respectable. He had nowhere else that he could take them. She would tend to them, feed them, and make sure they were always entertained, while he would steal away to the studio for days at a time. The children would often question her of his whereabouts, and on the days when she was away, he would not tend to them. She didn't understand why she was working so hard to help him strengthen his relationship with his kids, and he was constantly working to mess it up. Dina shared that at one point, Darian's mother, his two brothers, his pregnant sister along with her boyfriend, and their two-year-old, were all living in her home. Only for him to tell her that he was leaving, because the house had become too crowded. To add insult- This is trifling. This is trifling. Like, like you don't even love yourself. Nobody should be with you. And being halfway handsome it is, is not enough. I mean, I, I'm not going to like, look, when I told that story a long time ago about losing $10,000 to a guy, it wasn't just because I was getting bopped over the head like some bottom B word. It was because the way that this woman was having compassion on him and performing extra hard to try to fix things with his kids and his family is what I was doing. I would watch this deadbeat break these promises to his kids and I would fulfill them. That's a good woman. You, you can't tell me anything. You can't, you can't tell me anything. Now, now my partner is a better human being than I am. He can criticize me, but whoo, the average person can't tell me anything. That's a good woman. When I see the broken hearts of 10, eight and five year olds and I say, you know what? We're all going to family fun center. You know what? We're going to wild waves. You know what? We're going to great wolf. You know what? We're going. This Negro told you he was going to take you and he failed you. Through me, 
he's going to fulfill that promise. Because my thing was, you shouldn't be with me if you're going to be breaking these promises. So I would try to help him keep them. And I'm just like, you know what? You need to prioritize your family. And of course, he wasn't going to. But a lot of women, we lose so much supporting men like this. And then people laugh at us. Ah, you got bopped over the head for, for this many, you know, stacks. Whoopie ha. And they laugh at us without thinking, man, that's an, a really bad man. As black people, we're constantly laughing at a victim and it's not funny. It, it, I mean, it's really not funny because I mean, some of these women are like, damn, why is she cut his thing off? Why is she kill him? Why is she, why is she take him out of the gang? It's like, yeah, well, you, you drove somebody to a breaking point and you really shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have been so evil. It's just like the, and I'm indiscriminate with it because it's just like the other day when I uploaded that thing with Nicole and, and Deontay from Love After Lockup and she got him for $30,000. That wasn't funny to me. There were people like, aha, he's a self-hating black man who got used by a blonde with blue eyes. I don't feel sorry for him. I felt horrible for him. I'm, I'm this across the board, exploiting people's love for you, exploiting people's loyalty and, and devotion to you and resources. It's evil. You're literally taking that person's life. We're all on a one way ticket out of here to death. Like, like we're, we're all going to die. And the part of life that this person has making that money, creating these resources and nah. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. I got you for 30 grand. I got you for 10K. I got you for, no. No. It's, it's not okay. And instead of being mad at dirt bags like this, you guys look at black, oh, well, you should have chose better. Oh, you should be better. You should be better. And again, if you're not this kind of guy, I don't know why you're mad. If you're not this, this kind of Dara, like that. I don't know why you're mad. If you're not this kind of reject, if you're not this kind of felonious F boy, I don't know why you're mad. You should agree that we should leave these people alone because at the end of the day, that's what's going to keep us good women. You know, how oh, I only like women in their 20s because women in their 30s are bitter. You know how we stop from being bitter? You know how we stay bubbly and beautiful into our 30s and 40s? Avoiding people like this. To injury for the two years they were in relationship, were all living in her home only for him to tell her that he was leaving because the house had become too crowded. To add insult to injury, for the two years they were in relationship, Harper had no idea that Darian was actually a married man. It was his mother that made her aware of the situation, while all the while, a woman he told her was his aunt, was actually his wife. When asked her thoughts about the most recent episode of Put a Ring on It, where Kai makes it known that she and Darian had slept together, Dina shared she wasn't shocked that he cheated on Alexia with Kai. She explains that Darian treats his relationships like a Ponzi scheme. He will date one woman, to help elevate him to the next woman, only to use her to help elevate himself to the next woman. He wants a businesswoman, who will give him the type of sex he desires, however the type of women he wants, Darian cannot afford. She went on to say that he can take a confident woman, who is about her business, and break her down. But when something good happens for him, he wants the whole world to stop and celebrate. 